Hello, everybody. Welcome back to John versus episode 13. Uh, with me today, uh, a man who's uh, at the top of the ranks in Why We Love Horror Trivia. I'm so happy to have him on here. And we, we coordinated our outfits today without even talking to each other. So I I'm already have high expectations for this episode. Mr. Shannon Briggs, how are you doing today, sir? Oh, I'm doing very good, John. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. Um, you know, I, I always feel like I should apologize to my guests for bringing them on and making them watch a movie. Um, you know, however, like you said, you watched a few episodes of the show already, so you knew you were getting into, and you still were okay coming on, so I do appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> without, like, revealing what we're talking about yet, because I'll, I'll drop the trailer, what were your initial thoughts uh, after having to watch this movie? Well, um, after watching this movie, it was I had... I was confused, and we'll get to more about later, especially with the title of this movie. I feel like it's kind of it's a big asterisk towards it because it feels like there's a confusion in the film in the middle or something that I, I that completely gets swept under the rug the rest of the movie. I but think you I, have the same exact complaint I do. Does it happen to be when one of the female characters yells that maybe something else is going on that isn't really going on? Yeah, or more, more, yeah, yeah. I think we're on the same wavelength. We can yeah. discuss more about it later about the way it's kind of shot that kind of leads you to believe maybe she's right, but then the rest of the movie is like, no, that's not right. Yeah, let's talk about that. Uh, as I said in previous weeks, in Jagged Edge Productions, if they're involved, if they make a mistake, they're going to leave it in the movie, and they left several mistakes in Croc. Did anyone hear the story about this place? About a year or so ago, two locals went missing. The police found the remains of a party in a toilet tent. I can't believe my little girl's getting married. I'm not a little girl anymore. I'd like to thank you all for coming to watch me marry this absolute beauty. Here's to an unforgettable wedding. Cheers. Cheers! Ladies and gentlemen, it's lovely to see you all here today, and I'm so glad that you can make the journey in these difficult times. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today in the presence of... say as far as trailers go above average uh for jagged edge not not the worst trailer i've ever seen they have done way better trailers that one clearly shows a lot of the shitty cgi we're dealing with so you know like, they didn't hide that from you that is that shot of the crocodile just sitting there wagging his tongue which crocodiles apparently biologically cannot do uh is is the you know the norm of what you're going to see uh so there we we're talking about crocodiles a crocodile in the middle of england uh, which I don't believe is their native habitat, but that's fine. I'm willing to suspend disbelief. You know, I've seen Lake Placid, so whatever. Lake Placid done well. This not so much. Shannon, initial thoughts now that we know we're talking about Croc. Well, like I've yeah, like you brought up Lake Placid, and I was like, it's like it's also like I've I will say I've watched like several. I mean, obviously better um, horror movies that revolve around the crocodiles or alligators or any kind of like un underwater kind of menace or whatever, or whatever, especially, I mean, I highly recommend the uh, film Alligator, which I think does a better like crocodile attack of a large, of a large group of people, obviously much better than what this movie does with, uh, with this very, I mean, though with very limited budget, I feel like this, this main, uh, like the, what it was one that, like, I think it, this movie kind of started with the idea of, Hey, it's have, a crocodile attack a wedding. And I think it just kind of started from that idea and worked backwards. And we kind of ended up with this. But the problem is that thing happens in the middle of the movie and there's still like 30 minutes left of the movie after yeah, that. One of the things I, I noticed first about Croc is 
normally with a Jagged Edge production, you have like a cast. It's like it's like a modest sized cast. You have like maybe six to ten people. This movie, they brought every they they unleashed the entire roster of Jagged Edge. There's so many people that just show up in this movie just to get like like it's it's like the scene in Piranha 3D, like when they, everyone's just like ah, like, like, they tried to remake that and like they failed miserably. But they, there's so many people that just show up for the wedding. Yeah, I was gonna say I noticed, and also you can actually go you know, see in a trailer. And I had kind of had a one of the many times I had to pause this movie when I was watching it on Tubi to stop, stop. And it was like it was like somebody. It was obviously an old age makeup that kind of remind me sort of like the old guy um, in the remember in Six Fights commercials, the old guy that would just do the, yeah, the guy, dancing yeah. or whatever. Yeah, like that. Really, it's like I was like. I was like why did they have somebody like because he doesn't even really do a stunt or anything? I thought maybe a stuntman, but like he gets attacked, but it's not like a real like I don't. I was kind of confused with like yeah the need to have a have somebody uh, obviously um, old age makeup actor <laughs> in the wedding party. <laughs> Basically, this movie right from the jump falls into a lot of the same traps that like every Jagged Edge movie falls into. One, we get a cold open. Uh, these people are clearly like they're at like a it's not like a, it's like a manor house the kind of, exactly the kind of place you would rent for a wedding. However, they're there at the manor house, but they choose to camp out in the backyard of the manor house for some weird reason. Did you know that you can get married here? Because uh, because like they get out of the tent and like they're just on the property, you know. And for no real reason, with no origin story, there's just a crocodile there. And they make the mistake of just walking out of their tent at night. Crocodile eats them. Title card. And then uh, we just get a weird sex scene thrown in right after the title card, which oh, yeah. doesn't ever happen in these Jack Edge movies. Yeah, you mean we get introduced to um, Bargain Ben Jason Momoa? Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. That. Everyone's I mean, calling him Bargain Ben Aquaman, Bargain Ben Jason Momoa. He does, like, he's clearly, he's banking on that look. And he and this scene, this the scene that we're talking about, really has nothing, I mean, it has something to do with the movie because he's a character in the movie, I guess. Yeah. But they're establishing him as like a guy that, won't turn down a lady that's throwing herself at him. These things happen. I can't imagine how can anyone get over something like that. Oh. Because like he just shows up to, I guess, find the venue for his daughter's wedding. And the woman who is an employee of the place, I guess in order to seal the deal, just sleeps with him in the hot tub. Like just right off the bat. And that this does, I have to stress, this does not happen in Jagged Edge. Uncorked Entertainment is involved in this as well. But in Jagged Edge movies, there's things you will not see. You will not see humor. You will not see nudity, with the exception of Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey, for some reason. And you and a lot of and you will not see like a conclusion. But this movie actually gives us all three. So I did bump up my rating on Letterbox slightly. So I, I get those positives out of the way. So they they give us a sex scene for some reason, and then we get right into the main story. You want to? Throw the main story at the people, Shannon. Yeah, it basically, and it also it has inexplicably it has a six months later tag on it. Like, like okay, like we really needed to know. Like it was like six months later after, yeah, after the, the what we saw, yeah, after the the hot tub banging going on. I um, assume that girl was fired because she doesn't show back up. They must have fired her for that. That that is sexual harassment. I'm, I'm going to say maybe that's not the first time she's done that. So maybe it's like a repeat. Yeah, maybe they somebody yeah found out and was like, yeah, you're you're out of here. Like that's not how on? we do business. We don't, that's not how we do business at the farmstead. All right, lady, we get our customers organically. You don't have to sleep with everybody that walks in the front door. But yeah, basically, yeah. Once you get the yeah, the six months later tag, you get, you're introduced to our like yeah to the 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 bride to be and her bridesmaids, um, a bunch of just generic um, this generic one note characters that that you I mean that that are introduced and then then of course later on is the 
groom and his best man. And I guess he must be such a loser because he only has one groomsman that he has with him on her. Or I mean, obviously, she has like eight bridesmaids. He has a best man. <laughs> yeah, like he's. I mean, we'll go later on. Yeah, he, the guy is a piece of shit. So we got, maybe I'm, we could see someone go on if he only had one friend to be with him <laughs> during his wedding. <laughs> Yeah, just, yeah, spoiler alert, not only does he like sleep with one of the bridesmaids, it's the bridesmaid that his best man is trying to hook up with. So he's just like, he's just a double douchebag. Yeah, so chin up, go mm. get some rice, I'll clean up here, okay? All right. All right. Hi there. Hi. And even more spoiler alert, he doesn't get killed. It's like, what the hell? Like, I mean, like, he's the one that you, like, set up that you want to see get the most grizzliest croc uh, uh, the crocodile attack happen, and he doesn't. He, like, lives through the end of the movie, and I'm like, what? It's like, I mean, it's being subversive, but it's like, how, I mean, but, like, I'm, I'm sure pretty much anybody that's that, that happens to watch this movie like he's probably the number one person you want to see get some sort of comeuppance for yeah, all the stupid does shit he does he, in this movie. He gets a dirty look from the bride and her father. You all right? Don't even. And the, the, I think the dad does threaten him. And honestly, that might be worse than getting eaten by a crocodile because that, they, they've established that guy as a tough ass kicker. Yeah. Uh, and I do love how many times they reference that, like, the dad, Dylan Bruiser, uh, was, like, this badass who used to stop poachers. Like, he's like Crocodile Dundee, basically. Oh, business or pleasure? Business. I work for an anti-poaching organization. Um, but he ain't about that life anymore, you know, since his wife died. and There's a lot of, like, uh, borderline, like, eco-warrior stuff in this movie that just is forced in there. <laughs> Yeah, and I like to have a thing where he wants to like to like keep the croc alive. How are we gonna kill it? I don't intend to kill it. I intend to catch it. I'm like, um, I hate to break it to you, but I don't see any foreseeable way that you can be after the offense in this movie that you, that croc's gonna have even a, be able to go back to a zoo or anything. Like, it's, I mean, it's like after this, the massacre of a, the people of the. the of a wedding party and and the, 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 at the very least and also like the murders of who knows how many people in this countryside since everybody seems to willfully neglect that like the, 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 anything like it has like has happened at this countryside <laughs> so. and it's another movie where like everyone seems to know that people went here and went missing and it's legit it's not just like a it's not just like a ghost story they're telling it's like yeah people went missing here uh, they never figured out what happened. They just found their tent and like a bunch of blood. It's like, oh, I hope you got a good discount on the property for the goddamn wedding then. Th th that's ridiculous. Did anyone hear the story about this place? Oh, yeah. No? No. What story? Well, about a year or so ago, two locals went missing. Well, see, here's the thing is, I don't think the bride actually knows because they make a big deal of like her, like her, her best friend. Like yeah, like when she's out of the out of a room, telling all the other bridesmaids, like, oh, did you know that like the, like a year ago, like two people went missing here and stuff, and and everyone's like, no, and it's like, and then as soon as she bridesmaids, like, mm, don't, it's basically just saying no, zip it up, zip it up. I'm like, wouldn't you? It's her best friend. Would you want to let her know that something like is? I mean, I mean, something. Yeah, that shady that 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 that. that has happened there and she seems yeah, like she right. doesn't she like she kind of get, gets let off the hook for that <laughs> right okay so we let's get on to the, the big the big huge turning point here right so the groom charlie and the, i guess i don't know if she's the maid of honor but she's definitely one of the closest friends georgie uh uh they have a history they, they they've been hooking up the whole time he's been with lisa uh so basically they just they're at the wedding, they're at the night before the wedding. Everyone is there. Her father, this badass MF, is there. They decide, let's just walk like 50 feet away from the house to the barn and have like loud sex uh, in the barn. Um, the crocodile just wa waltzes in there. Uh, Charlie abandons Georgie, the girl. She gets like killed in the worst CGI. I'll put it right here. <laughs>
that I've ever seen. Um, and then his reaction to her getting killed is, I'm just going to clean myself up, tuck my bloody clothes in a drawer, and go to sleep. Yeah, I'm thinking maybe they're trying to say that he suffered from some sort of trauma, maybe. But then it still doesn't explain, like, his whole reasoning for, like, the next day to, like, only tell the best man. And basically say, even if it even saying that this happened, like, somebody got got eaten by a crocodile right in front of his fucking eyes. And yet he wants to continue with this wedding. And it's like, dude, priorities. Like, I mean, I know you're afraid about your... You're soon to be bride find out you were banging the bridesmaid, but still, I think the bigger deal is a killer crocodile is on is around this area and kids. I mean, and you're not going to tell anybody about it. And the thing is, he's like he acts all like nervous up throughout the whole thing. I'm like, dude, it's all on you. You choose to let the people know. So you, yeah, like this is all on your head. He goes back and he goes to sleep. Like I would have run through the house. I wouldn't have taken my clothes off. I would have run through the house through the front door, gotten in my car and driven right to town. Like, yo, uh, there's a gigantic crocodile that just ate a girl. And honestly, if he had done that, the whole affair probably wouldn't have even come out, you know, because nobody would have cared because then it would have jumped to things. But why would anybody out in not only a horror movie, but a horror movie like this do anything that makes sense? And you're right. Then the next morning, it's just like business as usual. The wedding is going on. Um, but like some of the people are concerned that this girl is missing. Yeah. But not not concerned enough to stop the wedding, and the dad volunteers to go looking for her. Uh, and then he finds her watch. He finds bones, which apparently also is not something that crocodiles do. Um, and then there's a confrontation between Dylan and the crocodile, where the crocodile bites him, and he hits the crocodile on the head. And then they just kind of stand in the same room. Because they keep yeah. cutting the party and cutting back to them. And him and the crocodile are like right next to each other. And they do that about three times. And then it cuts to him just walking out of the barn. The crocodile doesn't care. Like weird. Yeah. It is, yeah, it is very weird. And I said, and I'm, like, I, on I, one thing I will actually like get a, a positive, like, on a tangle aspect of this film, which we will have, obviously, we will we'll have a bunch of like uh, negative things to say as far as like the editing, directing as well. But at least I feel like the makeup, the gore makeup effects on this are pretty decent for as little budget as this film was. I like, think the, even they were shocked that they had good practical effects because they cut to the practical effects a lot. Like, I'm not going to spoil my drinking game, but like they like they were very proud. They're very proud of what they did. Let me tell you that much. Well, I will say, I mean, at least one thing it seemed like they were doing, but then it just kind of, oh, having that ash, that practical gore completely is undercut by having the CGI, um, yeah, horrible, like kind of intercutting with like him attacking, when he does attack people, when it's not all off screen. But when he does attack people, it's just kind of it just doesn't meld. It's like, oh, you see practical, but then CGI together, and it's like, yeah, with the way they're doing it, it doesn't work at all. So it, it's completely undercuts whatever. I mean, if they even were trying to have any kind of like actual like scares or anything in this film, yeah, it, that's it's scary. Good. Yeah. Well, from that point, they do go to the wedding. The, the wedding. Now the dad is missing because he's like hobbled. He's not dead. He just got bit, and his leg is messed up. But he's missing now. Now they're going to do the wedding without Georgie, without the dad. The wedding is going on. The crocodile is done. The crocodile's like, let's go. The crocodile just full on does a full frontal assault on the wedding. And I think this is the point you're going to. I won't spoil what you were going to say. What does one of the girls say? There's two of them. Get up. 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 Get up.
she literally said there's two fucking crocs okay and i was like okay maybe you're okay this maybe makes a little bit of sense like you're okay you're gonna explain that maybe since there's two crocs they can be able to be like mike how they were like michael myers like kind of like disappear out of nowhere one on one end one other okay that makes a little bit of sense but here's the problem that's the only line that's ever referenced that there's two and you can I think they do reference it one more time, like when they're trying to secure the house, because they, they're saying she says the crocs are going around the house. So they, they reference it one more time after that. Okay, true. But go ahead, Shannon. What's the huge issue then with this movie? Well, the huge issue is the rest of the, the it seems like the, the rest of the, the characters are to keep speaking as if there's just one crocodile. And it, as we will, as the rest of the movie unfolds, there is only rock one crocodile that that is attacking them, and there's only one crocodile that is killed. And I thought, okay, maybe it's like a their very last moment they're going to do like a jump scare, like oh, all this time, like we all think make us think we're stupid enough that we forgot about it. We're supposed to be two of them, and then then I so I was like, about at the end of the movie, I was like, okay, like I'm it was, I paused it and I was like, why aren't they like revealing that there's another crocodile? And then I saw like it was like at the end of the movie, I was like, did they just? Just introduce the idea of two crocodiles and completely fucking forget about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Script supervision non-existent. They say there's two crocodiles. They reference that there are two crocodiles one more time. They kill one crocodile and it's a happy ending. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. Just, it's crazy. Like I said, like I was like saying, yeah, I was like thinking this was like, yeah, more apt tile versus movie. We crocs because in the middle of the way through, I was like, okay, so there's two crocs. And I think there's like even part when the yeah two bridesmaids, which I will get to like obviously they were when they rented this pool house, they were told explicitly you can't even put any kind of fake blood in this pool. Because one of the bridesmaids gets killed and you they come back and find her body. No blood. She no blood. Pool, no blood whatsoever. Perfectly balanced pool. I gotta say, perfectly balanced pool. But if you're killed by a crocodile in the pool, I don't care how much chlorine you're putting in that pool. There's blood in that pool. I know. Like even if she was, even he was, even if the cop was grabbing her to like drown her, or whatever. Like she still, it'd be some blood. You know what I mean? Like and it's just crazy. Like I just was thinking, like they were they already had they blur the CGI buzz on just the crocodile and not even like try to exploit any kind of fake CG like blood in the water or whatever. Like that's like that's just lazy. <laughs> And they definitely had a blood budget because there's a lot of kills where, like, you know, you don't see the crocodile, but you see the upper half of somebody's body and they are acting like they're getting eaten and they just spray blood all over the people. Like when the reverend gets killed and there's a few other people that get killed where they're just like. Like just throwing blood all over people. So. Yeah, there's the. Well, I mean, there's one like the one weird like shot where like there's this one guy saying he like is er, er, coming and he's going to the car, and then like the sound, which again I will get to. The sound mix in this movie is fucking horrible, <laughs> but this it goes from him like the weird jump cut of him disappearing, blood like a little like sliver of like fake blood go on the bride and her screaming. But you do not hear a scream. It's just the like the score like jammed up or whatever. It's like what what, what happened there? <laughs> it's such, but it's just like weird like editing like kind of bad editing that's done like throughout this the film where you feel like. Either they weren't able, some of us messed up with the take or whatever, but they're like, no, we'll just leave it in here and it won't look at all like weirdly, like weird and obvious that we kind of had to like edit around this, this scene for some reason. That's not really important. It's like, it's like, it's like I said, it's like a weird off screen kill of somebody we just a random person and that's in this, that was at this wedding. Yeah, it's so many peeps. And like I said, I can't stress this, this cast is bloated. It's so many weird, willy nilly kills. Like, Everyone cannot run. Everyone trips. Everyone falls. Every, like it's it's like, like every trope you you know and love from the movies you actually like, they do in this movie, fifteen times, and it's also like very random. Like, is there a body? Is there not a body? Are they going to do practical effects? They're not because the mom gets like a full on like quato from Total Recall coming out. Yeah, of Tabby. God. 
and everybody, some people, and that, whereas other people just vanish. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm wondering if some more people were like game with like the having like doing the, the gore effects, like the Reverend, like he gets like, it's like a blood fountain. Like he gets like, even though it's a, again, like with the mix of the CG crocodile and stuff, like it's, it doesn't really work as a visual, but at least he like, he gets like probably one of the more bloodier deaths and stuff. But then it's like, yeah, like the majority of the people are like, it's off screen, like deaths, like, 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 like I, you need to bring up like, yeah, it's a little bit like cast and you think, yeah, I'm surprised with as many people that were in this film that it's like the body count is not as big as you thought it will be. Like once it gets to the wedding, the thing, and like nobody else gets, after the wedding massacre, nobody, you have to go through like 20 something more minutes of this movie before the best man is killed. And it's off screen as well. <laughs> so it's like, There's like five survivors, I think. It's like the bride, the groom, the dad, Chrissy Wanna, uh, the like the you know the the dad's love interest, I guess, and then just one of the other random bridesmaids survived. And I can't stress how much how much the bridesmaids kind of look like each other. So you really lose track of like who's alive and who's dead. But and it goes so quick. Like there's a lot of kills, just like boom, 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 boom. Like you, it's disorienting. I would say. Yeah, it's like, uh, yeah, I agree. Yeah, like pretty much. Yeah, they kind of like this. Then even with the survivors, like they're all like their main carrier traits. Like yeah, that one bri that one bridesmaid that seems like she was gonna be the dead meat because she doesn't really have like any like love interest connection or anything with her. Whatever. And her main thing is that she's kind of like, or she's kind of like into like yoga. Yeah, so it's like yoga her allows her to crawl from the inside of a car to the roof of a car. And I'm glad she said that because I wouldn't have figured out how she could have done it other than she does yoga. This is where all that yoga training pays off. Yeah, like you had to, you could like stop it here and you like told me like, oh, who else was going to be dead? Like I was, yeah, I definitely thought, yeah, like we said before, the groom definitely going to be the save the last one, be dead meat, her and the best man. And like, and like I, I could understand the possibility, of the, yeah, like the course, the bride, her father, and the bride, and the 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 uh, fa the, the, the father of brides, his love interest, because they kind of set that up. You know, though it's kind of funny. Like they, they, it seems like the bride's the only one that doesn't understand that her father can pretty much get any woman that he wants. Like he, really, she's like, oh, like I, we, I need to hook, have him with my like my best friend or whatever. Like he's it feels yeah, like. Also no, that that the dad's just hooking up, trying to hook up at his daughter's like rehearsal dinner, basically. Like he's gonna he's gonna get it, you know, and like yeah. he doesn't care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like the and the last weird thing I guess we'll talk about is like how it all wraps up. Like they they canvass the house, like you know, the dad had the dad has a gun in his car, they have a croquet mallet, they have this, they have that. They they allegedly secure the house, but the crocodile walks right in. Who cares? Like the crocodile can do whatever it wants. Then they have like a like a road flare. And a bunch of other stuff. Yet when they kill the crocodile, suddenly they have like, like a, le a live electric wire, which they never mention before they kill the crocodile with it. Yeah, like they have a whole thing where they like, yeah, the one thing that they like, they kind of like, they show like, a, like the like light in like the kitchen area, or whatever, and it's like supposed to be like, and yeah, but then you're like, okay, but like how, like yeah, they don't never have any of the characters displaying like what the game plan is. They just go straight to like. Yeah, her getting a flare and going to the pool house, and then you listen, and then like, yeah, and I had a kind of hard time like figuring out what exactly they were using to throw into the. the I don't know where the they pool. got that. I have no yeah, idea. Like, what? And if, if, first of all, if you touch a live electric wire, if the live electric wire is it has enough conduit in it to electrify a swimming pool, if you touch that with your bare hands, you're gonna die too. But so I'll just chop it up to the list of things Jagged Edge doesn't know anything about electricity. But I could have figured that out from Mega Lightning, I guess. Yeah, and also, yeah, like it's also it makes sure that this, yeah, when they like the the the, the Crocs get electrocuted, that it blows up. Like, it, and it would be more impressive if it was practical. It being CGI, and it goes on way too long. Like, it just it keeps buzzing and buzzing. Like, it's like okay, like 
gets yeah. somewhere and then it finally explodes. But it's like you could have like cut down a good like 15 or 20 seconds of it of that crocodile being electrocuted yeah. and just went from that. The and room. then a banner that is inside the pool house that had nothing to do with the wedding because the pool house wasn't involved in the wedding floats down to the pool. What the hell was the no, banner doing on the ceiling yeah, of the pool house? I'm sorry, darling. Look at it this way. Your honeymoon can't be any worse. Yeah, and well, it's, I guess it's the do that real banger of a last line because this movie's just things is so fucking funny with all these little like one liners or something that these characters say that the father has to say, Well, the least your honeymoon can't be worse. Which I was thinking, fuck you, like, did you even watch your own movie? These two people didn't actually get married, so like, why did that, did that line doesn't even make sense because they're like, do you just a stupid line? And <laughs> well, she's not gonna marry this guy now. Yeah, like, like it doesn't even make sense in there. I mean, it would make sense if, yeah, if they were actually in love and they got married or whatever. But no, there, there's no way these two people, after the fact, especially once she knows like what he's done or whatever, that, that yeah, like it's, it's not going to be the, yeah, it's definitely like he's probably going to be definitely like fit, fit with the bill, let alone with like the fact that his parents uh, is were murdered and stuff. And it's like, <laughs> Most of their friends, his parents, a, a man of the cloth, and various other bystanders were killed. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, like I said, uh, if you get together with your friends, it, it, it's a goofy time. It's uh, good enough. And if you do that, the champ, Luis Booz, has asked us to create a drinking game. So we will do that. <laughs> I always let the guests go first, Shannon. So if you were, if you had to rewatch this for some weird reason, you were with your friends, what would you make them do watching this movie? Well, I, well, I watch this on Tubi and um, as, as far as like, I, and I always usually, when I watch movies, I usually watch it with a closed caption just so I can like understand like if I missed something or whatever. And I watched this on Tubi with a closed caption and I was talking about how bad the sound mixing this is and this, this movie is. I swear you can do a drinking game of how many times the person that did close captioning on this movie just gave a fu gave up with what was being said and just put inaudible. But every time when people when people were talking, every time it's just like how like when somebody like you know, talks and it's just where sound mixing is so bad that you barely can make out what it says. They're like, oh, uh, inaudible, inaudible. Like we just like we we not even bother. And it's not like I know it takes prison in Britain. And I know, like, but even for Britain, like, these people are, I mean, their accents are not, like, that hard to, like, understand. It's just old with the sound mixing. But I just think it's hilarious that the person that did closed caption is just kind of, I can see just barely, just barely gave a crap about what was going on. And just, they like, earned that paycheck. They earned <laughs> that paycheck, so they just gave time, up. Every time they don't do close, every time the closed captioning person gives up on their job, take a drink. And then also, every time the camera lingers on the, the lingers on the uh, practical effects like where, where it's it lingers just a little bit too long where you just know that the whatever the effects crew like i'm, pr I'm proud of this dude i'm proud of this every time you could just figure the effects crew's like no, no 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 keep it on there keep it on there or it goes back to practical effects for no reason take a shot <laughs> yeah that's, that's a good one as well, <laughs> well that has been croc uh shannon and i watch this so you don't have to but if you do watch it please use alcohol um shannon if people want more of you where can they find you here in this community um, you can find me a few different places. As, as this recording, I am currently the um, asset um, champion on uh, Jordan Pierce's um, YouTube channel. Um, and I try to participate as much as I can. I usually, if it's not weekly, it's usually bi-weekly. And you also will probably be seeing me on your uh, uh, channel again uh, fairly soon. On the, I do believe I'm probably going to have a another uh, match in the near future as well, which I'm very much looking forward to. Yeah, I, I do believe probably no, th th maybe this coming Friday. I think it's this coming Friday where your match with Kerry should be airing. So uh, look out for that. And winner of that match is going to be in the number one contenders match. So best of luck to you in that match. Until next time, though. Uh, if you made it this far in the video, like, comment, subscribe, and share. Uh, go to the Facebook group. You get the news early with what's going on every week. Or you can go to TikTok, WWL Horror on TikTok. I'm doing extra stuff there. Hopefully, I get up to 1,000 followers. We'll do some live stuff on TikTok. If you're old-fashioned, WWL Horror at gmail.com. Drop me a line. Coming up this week, 
this Thursday. Uh, Scream on scene. Me and Abby and Aaron will be going to the movies again. I believe we're going to see Lisa Frankenstein. I have, I'm 99% sure it's Lisa Frankenstein. This Friday, uh, why we love horror trivia, like I said. Shannon Briggs, Carrie Webb in the main event, and then the undercard. I believe we're going to have a debut match. Two players you've never seen before. Who are they? Show up and find out. But until then, this has been John Versus, and we appreciate you stopping by.